in general, but also for the um, just the various kinds of relationships that I've gotten to have with each of you, or most of you <laughs> for the most part. Um, and it's so fun to be so um, differently nourished by different people, whether creatively or spiritually, or my mom making me dinner. <laughs> I've been, my studio is in Canby, where my parents are, so I've been Oh, can you talk now? Yes. Yeah. Thank you. Um, or sorry. Thank you. Um, so I've been I've been at home a lot. So I've been kind of slowly regressing into my high school self sometimes. But on that note, I I made dinner a couple weeks ago. So um, but yeah, it's just it's so fun. Um, so fun to have all you guys here. And then um, I sorry, I just got sidetracked for a minute. Oh, two two very special thank yous. One to my father. Um, who has put in a maybe unhealthy amount of hours helping me with um, the frames and the material especially. And um, I think that is, I know that that is a, a really big difference in um, things looking like they have weight on the wall and they feel, they feel important and they help me feel important. So that's my dad, you can wait till <laughs> so, I, I tell people, I tell people that we made them together, but I'm, <laughs> Thank you very much. So, um, and then also to some of, some of them are here, but to the women who have let me paint them. This is, I think there's five there's five paintings, but there are a good God, eight to twelve still at home that are not quite as finished. They just don't fit as well into the hole, and um, it's been really really fun and also very vulnerable. Kind of like Sarah was saying, spending time with people and asking them to be vulnerable and sit. Um, sit in front of you and um, be very much themselves in just a very unfamiliar environment. So it just extends thank you to to the women who have um, not volunteered but agreed <laughs> to be a part of this. Um, so I'm going to talk about my work a little bit and then you guys can ask. If I start talking quiet, say something again. I'm going to try <laughs> to talk louder for everyone. Um, so my artistic process is I'm still learning very much about it. I feel like I'm at the very beginning of my career as an artist, so there's a lot of unknowns in regards to the hows and the whys of my making practice. But something that I have learned thus far is that I like organically responding to my environment. So I like um, just painting people who I'm drawn to and not worrying a whole lot about why it is. There's a lot of surface level things that are easier to point out, like. I just really love your nose, which is really strange to some people, but there are just there are things that um, that I feel drawn towards in people's physical presence. And then, um, um, so I start, I just kind of start by painting people who I, I really want to paint. And, and then the more that I make and the more people that are part of this group, the more I get to ask questions about the bigger picture. Like, why all of these women? And not just why do I paint them, but I feel that my paintings are a really honest reflection of my environment and my relationships. So why have I chosen to be in relationship with these people? What is it, both individually and also consistently um, across the board, that draws me to these, these populations or these communities? And so this really fun process of, again, responding um, just to my, my natural feelings and desires and then um, really critically thinking about it. And so as I think more conceptually, I also think formally about elements to to make peace. So as you can see there's there's some visual unity here, but they didn't they were not looking the same for a long time. So as I continue to ask questions about these underlying themes that are um, that are common, that are shared, I get to also figure out the visual elements that support support those deeper things to bring pieces together. And that is a new experience for me because for the most part I just have worked on one thing at a time and done it in one sitting. And these pieces are very different because I have gone back over and over and over again and really both spent time with these women and also um, just gone, revisited my, my formal decisions. And that has been an incredible challenge in itself, but I think why, a, a part of the reason that these pieces look a lot different than, um, than other paintings that I've done. And so what I, what I can share with you guys tonight are my, a lot of my reflections on, on why, why these people and why these choices. And I start talking quiet again. <laughs> um, but 
something that I, I think has been really interesting, like I was saying, that my process has kind of, or I'm learning my process, and, and the paintings that are at the very beginning that I left at home are very different than these ones. And so something I found that drew me to these women specifically, um, and, and they also, they represent a, a larger group as well, but something that has been really valuable during my time in Newburgh is that I have found an inner a quietness, like a, a peace inside of myself that um, that comes from somehow holding, similar to what Sarah was saying, but just sitting in the mystery of things, of pain and of joy, um, of life and death and dark and light. And it has been so rich to learn that from many of these women. And then at the same time, um, with my, you can see my work changing. It goes from this like really crazy balance of like calm and chaotic, where these like there's these moments that feel like oh I can see them in that, and then it kind of like falls apart at different areas. And um, and these pieces though um, feel like a, a physical manifestation of the the balance that I am learning to sit in. So there's this these this, these quiet moments here that are almost. Um, many of them almost feel like they are, the subject is disappearing or, or blending in with their environment. And then, and then it moves out both in, almost it can feel into like deconstruction or, um, or chaos, I would call it, as it moves down. Whether it's um, just that the figure kind of disappears or becomes less detailed, more muddy. Um, and it feels both like this balance of, of um, this peacefulness with, with that they're still being built, and also though that they're falling apart, which is a really a, just a beautiful tension to me that I think all of us should should sit with in life is that we are both being formed from the moment that we're born, and also that we are falling apart, <laughs> and and that is something that I have learned to sit with, and something that has played a huge part in just my this this inner peace that I have found, and I it's so interesting to me that that the, the show that is full of these women who have taught me so much about that, that um, that you can see it visually, that you can see it. And that is really helpful to me as a, a kinesthetic visual learner to be able to see um, and more, more deeply understand the things I am learning. And I think that, that is all I want to say. <laughs> How do you know when you're finished? <laughs> That's a really, it's a really hard thing. I, I, a lot of what drives my process is likeness. So once I, once it looks like them to me, then it is more, um, what I am learning is to look at it critically and formally and say what visually about this feels weird or doesn't feel supportive of the, the emotional content and what I would like it to say. Um, and that is the most concrete like question I can ask my work after I feel like I don't need to work on anymore. But a lot of that is in the face, and it's it's as it comes um, away from the face that is currently, and I think will continue to be for a while, or maybe my whole life, a great challenge. Like when to when to stop, when when to keep pushing. So, yeah, I don't know. Where does the title come from? Yes, the title the comes from, it's called On Being Roses, it's the title. And in there's a little book over there um, on a piece of wood, and inside of it there are two poems. Uh, one is called Roses, and one is called When the Roses Speak, I Pay Attention. And um, I'm not, I don't have them memorized, so you can read them on your own, but they're both poems by Mary Oliver. And she um, has this way of, she writes a lot about nature, but she just, gives all of these plants and these, these elements of nature, these really personified descriptions and personalities. And when she um, speaks about roses, they just feel very, very wise to me, but also playful. Uh, kind of the tensions I was talking about earlier, like they're um, yeah, wise and, and playful, and um, there's uh, just so many things. And, and I, a lot of, um, she, she'll like ask them questions in a lot of her poems, and then they'll kind of answer, kind of answering, but also like leaving a lot of room for like, what actually <laughs> did you say? So, um, so I actually, I thought of, I was trying to think of a title, and I thought of those words, and I couldn't figure out what 
um, what it was from, and so I started reading through all of her poetry, trying to find it, or all the poetry that I have. And I found one poem, and I was excited, but still felt kind of unsatisfied, and then a couple days later, I found the other one, and well, I wasn't looking for it, and then I said, oh, these, these are the two. So I would love for you to read them, um, but yeah. Yes. So what brought you to deciding to paint them with your eyes closed? Yes, that is an excellent question. <laughs> um, it's a lot a lot of different things. Um, initially, I believe it was just a formal challenge to myself because I love painting eyes. And that is like that question um, of when do you finish? Usually once I got the eyes, I was done. Like I did, I did not care about doing anything else. And, and I think um, that is a really great week. And so I wanted to really make sure that I was not leaning on the eyes to carry the entire piece because mm -hmm. a lot of pressure to put on like these little tiny things. So like again, there's a, this this portion of calm and, and clarity, and then it moves out. And so this feeling right here used to be only only in those the eyes. And um, so yeah, formal challenge just to myself to um, to get out of that kind of rut. And then also. Um, only one of the women, the one at the very end, along with, uh, her name is Janet, and along with another That's question. Yeah, yeah, your mom. <laughs> <laughs> wonderful woman. Um, I met, there was this group of um, really wonderful, gentle women who were part of, a, start talking quietly again, <laughs> I started a prayer group at Newburgh Friends Church, and, um, and I got to meet with them last summer weekly and just pray over all of the prayer requests from church, and it was part of just this really rhythmic, like, peaceful, experience for me and so much of my my time with them their eyes were closed and I would keep my eyes open <laughs> and just like just watch them because they're so fascinating to me and during that time I was also thinking a lot about the location of thought and where like if you were to imagine thought where you think it would be um, if you think you have ownership over your thoughts or if they're like floating about kind of leaking into other people's thoughts and heads and something that was interesting about this prayer group was just that these were thoughts that were asked to go somewhere and so I kind of just got hooked on these people with their eyes closed and um, and then the people the audio or the, the subjects have kind of shifted some a lot from that environment as well still from the church or from the community but um, but the eyes have are from from those women or not physically but <laughs> inspired by those women yeah. Any other questions? Values are so uh, similar throughout that you know, maybe there's a month difference between. How do you. Uh, it, it seems like it'd be impossible to get the same values in the palette. Yeah. Is it all by measurement? The, the, the colors the you mean? The same choices, the same choices. Yeah, it was just a lot of, of practice and um, making mistakes <laughs> and <laughs> responding to those. And working the palette till you get what, what you want. Yeah, and that's, so all the paintings that I left at home. What they, you want, that's all Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> so the ones, Even though you're not looking at it. Yeah, yeah. The other one. The ones, um, the ones that I left at home, they don't have the unity here, so they were. I was learning so much while I was going that every painting was different than the one before, which is kind of scary when you're preparing for an event where you share a lot of work with people because you want some some amount of um, of consistency. And so a lot of it was just um, making maybe unsuccessful paintings and getting to know my paint a lot better, getting to know how how to mix colors and how to put them on the canvas. A lot of them too is. How, when I go back to the piece, how to use the same colors again, which is a, a great challenge for me. So, a lot of it is just practice. Did you yeah. ever refer to that piece in the other room that, for the one comparison? Of the one mm -hmm. that you oh, oh. <laughs> no, one yeah. They, so, I was working in the small room, so I would carry them in individually, and then all the other ones were out there. Yeah, so I did a lot of visual reference. Yeah, yeah, seeing like this one is way too pink, or this one is. But honestly, I was very relieved when I got here because there were some differences I couldn't tell at home, but they do, they actually feel a lot more similar here than at home. Yeah, yeah. The room was pretty dark that they were all being stored in, so. Yeah. Good question.